I'm in Maasim Sarangani, the southernmost tip of the Philippines, and I'm literally about to take off. Catch you later. Ready, Joseph? Okay. Let's go. Preparing. Preparing to launch. Think. Okay, anchor, huh? Strong wind. Okay. Okay, walk. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> My mission up here is to scout the road I'm about to take as I make my way up to the second largest island in the Philippines, Mindanao. Over there is Jensen. Everybody looks so small down there. While my ultimate goal is the northernmost province of Montana, my plan for today is to drive for the city of General Santos. I saw everything up there. The question is, what didn't I see? I saw the beaches. arrived in the city of General Santos. I noticed that everyone just calls it Jensan though. It's one of the most urbanized cities in Mindanao and is home to over half a million residents. 8,000 of them are employed by the city's famous tuna industry. I want to find out what the local food scene is like, so I'm stopping by Changsang Arcade where I hear all the locals come to eat and where there's loads of seafood dishes I can try. Roadside grills are the best. The food is fresh, the service fast, and the people are interesting. Hi, good evening, madam. Welcome to Abis Barbecue and Eo. Hi, we good have, evening. We have plenty of varieties of Oh of my meat. gosh. And then you will just choose which among them you like. So I just pick the fresh one yeah. and you cook it right there yes, for me? Yes. What's the most popular thing here? Uh, I can suggest to you is the moon fish because there are dotted brown Colors. here. And the other name is Diana, the, the song of the whole, whole Anka. Oh, please take my <laughs> Diana. <laughs> I really love the way you sang Diana, Diana. so I'd like to try the Diana. Okay, Diana. And I'd like to try some this seaweed as well. Ah, this is my favorite. And it costs you only 40 pesos per order. Okay. It's very affordable price. I love it. <laughs> Our waitresses will bring it to you already. That was okay. so fast. This one. Wow. The seaweed. We have to mix it like this. Oh, it's a beautiful mix, salad. Mix, mix, mix. Now we can try it if you want. Okay. Well, I've never eaten anything like this before. I'm eating some kind of Slippery seaweed. <laughs> it's very slippery and it's hard to eat. Okay, I'll that try will it. help your voice more singing. It's delicious and tender and a little bit salty and fresh from the ocean. It's it's really really good. Well, this is very tender and delicious. What is that? Ooh. Oh, that is my surprise menu for you. I'm not okay. sure what that is. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not trying that. You try that. That is one of our specialties. Is it seafood? People from Jensan loves to eat this one. Try it. Try not okay. only the Diana, but also that one. And guess what is that? Okay. <laughs> you make me scared when you say, oh, guess no, what it is. It's not scary. <laughs> I can't tell what it is. Oh, what is that? What it's really think? good. The sauce oh. that you cook it in is delicious. Oh, what do you think is that? It's very soft. Okay. Uh, and what else? Tell me the truth. Yummy? Yummy, very yummy. That's part of the tuna fish. The sperm of the tuna. The tuna yes. <laughs> We are cooking the sperm of the tuna. Okay, that... Oh. Apparently, I just ate the sperm of a tuna. <laughs> 
never thought that I would say those words. And the other words I never thought I would say is, it's delicious. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> Let me try the Diana. I love the amount of garlic that's on top of here. I'm a garlic lover. Very tender. There is another special thing for you. So you try that first and tell me what is that. Guess again. All this mystery meat. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's also sizzling. What is that kind of sizzling? It's good. It's uh, this one. The sperm was very soft. <laughs> and the other one, it's not soft. It's not soft. There it's and flaky. What? Chunky, little chunky. A little chunky, yeah. Okay. I'm scared of what you're done. gonna tell me what oh, it don't is. Be scared. <laughs> that is the egg of the tuna. <laughs> I have now eaten the entire life cycle of a tuna. It starts as a sperm, then turns into the egg, and then turns into the fish, and all of it goes in my belly. <laughs> so, you see, so you can always find tuna here in our place. Tuna is a major industry here. Yes. So you can find the tuna here in fish port. So you can tell me how to get to the fish port, and then I can see the fishermen bring in the tuna. Well, I know my mission tomorrow, though. I'm going to the fish port. My hotel is in downtown Jensen, but the real city center is 15 kilometers away. The General Santos City Fish Port Complex. This is the tuna capital of the tuna capital of the Philippines. Constructed with the aid of the Japanese, the fish port is where tuna is offloaded, weighed, graded, and then auctioned off to buyers from around the world. Last night, I gave myself a mission to find the fish port, and here I am, all booted up. The only thing I have to do now is find a boat that's unloading some tuna. Hi, Bubu, hi. Who do you want to know You want me to help you carry the fish? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's huge. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a dirty job. Let's get the hair out of the way first. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. On my shoulder? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Okay. Well, I wanted to see what life was like at the fish port. <laughs> now I need to find a weighing scale. And pronto. This fish is heavy. Got it. Got it? 17, is that good? It's good. Hey, we got a big fish. Tuna here can weigh up to 180 kilos. So my 17 kilo tuna is kind of puny. There's so many fishermen here and so much tuna. I'm wondering where does it all go? But its value also depends on its quality. So I'm gonna have it graded and see if I have a winner. Hi! Hello ma'am, good morning. Hi! Welcome to Jensen Fishboard. Thank you so much. What's your name? My name is John Lee Lagos. Uh, quality Control Inspector. You're the Quality Control Inspector. Yes ma'am, precisely. Excellent, I found the right person. Yes ma'am. Well, I just got this fish, but I don't know what to do with it next. What's the process here? If you want, we will show you how to slice the tuna. Okay, Is well, you? I've already carried it from the boat, so, so teach me how to do it. Okay. Bye bye. Mom, um, he will show to us how to classify the fish. Yeah, let's see how it works. Let's try. Okay. Just poke it in. Then, mom, your your hands. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, it's on glass. What it looks class? like a worm. Okay. Yeah. It's class B. Class B. I didn't get a class A fish, but I'm still proud of it. But that's but not that's too bad. Good. That's, that's still that's good. good also for How do you tell? The color. color. The color of the flesh. The flesh? Yes. If it is reddish brown, then it is class A. Ah. If it is slightly colored, then the category Plus B. So when I go to the sushi restaurant, that's what I get. It's very pink, very red. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Plus A, it goes to export market like Europe, US, and Japan. Plus B goes to processing plants. After they classify the fish, we go to the next step, which What's is the, the gill and gutting. They remove the necessary entrails of the tuna. Okay, that's a big knife you have there. Slice open the belly first. Careful. These are the gills. Yes. Ew, slimy. <laughs> That's his heart. Do people eat that? Yes, ma'am. Really? It's delicious. <laughs> I'll just.
just take his word for it. Off with the fins. And then... No more yellow fins. Sorry, Tuna. Last spin. It's the Tuna Joe. Ah, it's that's the... a delicacy, right, too? Yes, ma'am. That's butter loin. Butter loin. All right. So we kind of cut all the sides of it. Top, bottom, middle. That's what I'm used to seeing. Just oh. that part. <laughs> Ready for dinner. Having experienced working a full morning at the fish port, I can now safely say that tuna trading is probably not for me. Being around that fresh tuna has gotten me incredibly hungry. I think it's time to go find something to eat. So I've followed the tuna all the way from the fish port here to Jerry's Grill, and I'm about to sit down to a nice dinner of tuna belly and tuna pangram. It's tuna jaw, which apparently is a specialty here, and something I've never tried. I'm ready to dig in. This is tuna jaw. Dig in. I can see why this is a tuna capital. The sauce on this is delicious, and it's very tender. Excuse me, ma'am. This is uh, Inio tuna belly, ma'am. Mm. Thank you, Salama. More food. Let's try this tuna belly. I just love how everything here is just grilled to perfection. With a belly full of tuna, this is the best way to cap off my last night in General Santos City before I head off to Davao. Three and a half hours northwest of Jensen lies Davao, the largest city in the archipelago. With a land area of 2,444 square kilometers and with Mount Apo towering over its border as the country's highest peak, Davao cannot be missed. Home to roughly 2.26 million people from several ethnic groups, Metropolitan Davao is the main business and trade hub of Mindanao. And funnily enough, the durian capital of the Philippines. I'm passing by the Royal Enfield store to see if they've got a bike that can handle the rough riding that I might be facing on my long ride up the Buddha Highway. Hi, you must be Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm Jimmy. So nice You're to Jimmy. meet you. <laughs> Jimmy and Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> So how's your ride? My ride has been awesome so far. Yeah. I rode here from Jensen today. That's long. It's pretty far, right? That's long. That's hard nice work. scenic, yeah. curvy roads. Mm -hmm. And there were some bumps, and the suspension on the Classic was really good. It's really good. Nice and smooth. Yeah, as they say, Royal Enfield, the Classic, made like a gun, goes like a bullet. Why do they say made like a gun? It's part history. Royal Enfield started making guns, cannons, back in 1901. Well, that makes total sense. Now yes. I know. Made like a gun. Goes like a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Enfield is the oldest motorcycle brand in continuous existence. After like 120 years, they're here now in the Philippines. The reason why I came today is yeah. although the roads were bumpy uh -huh. and that bike handled them very well, there was also a lot of gravel and mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe I need something that can handle a little bit more adventure. And right? that's perfect. I'll introduce you to the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Himalayan. Yes. This is a beautiful bike. Yeah, this is the Royal Enfield Himalayan Granite. It's 410 cc, good horsepower, good torque. So this but is yeah, a tough this bike. Was, it is a tough bike. And this was built specifically for use in the Himalayan mountain range. If it can yes. handle the Himalayans, then it can handle my roads oh, that I'm about to go on. Definitely. And uh, the Royal Enfield Himalayan, the Philippines will have the first commercial release. Yeah, I was going to ask, because yeah. I've never seen this in the U.S. In the I don't US. think it's available there. I think soon. It'll Essentially, release. I'll be yeah. one of the first people here in the Philippines. But just call me, I'll send you one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy it. Oh, I'm uh, excited. Can I get on it? Oh, definitely. Hold that for me. Thank you. Normally when I hear adventure bike, I think I'm not going to be able to ride it. It's going to be too tall, it's going to be too heavy, but this is perfect just my size. Look, my feet can touch the ground, <laughs> it's nice and light, I love it. I'm excited to get on the road and the first place I'm going to go is Buda Highway. <laughs> 